Let's get modeling on this flying VCD player. In the last video, I showed how to bring the background image, the reference image that I'm providing for this thing that I designed uh, into Blender. And it's you know sitting there, it's relatively centered. So uh, we're gonna get going here. My 3D cursor is right in the middle of the stage. And I'm gonna go Shift A and bring in a plane. The plane is lying this way. I'm gonna rotate this RX90. And then I'm going to go into edit mode and switch to vertex. I could have done that uh, down here somewhere. All right. Where is it? There it is. Okay. Edge. I'm just so used to doing control tab. Alt M, merge at center. So I've merged all four vertices into one and it's right there in the middle. I'm going to pull it down to there. All right. And we'll zoom in. We're going to make our little adjustments and it's not going to follow this perfectly anyhow. So with that vertex selected, I'm just going to hit E and G a bunch of times. So I'm going to hit E to extrude and G, and that will pull it out to here. Now, there's a little bit of a curve here, so I'll go E and G, and I'll just sort of take it around the bend, and then I'll come up. All right, it doesn't have to be perfectly accurate. We're just having fun here. E and G, E and G, uh, maybe to... Maybe to there, and then we'll do another one. G and G, and we'll come all the way up. And move my diagram, hit G again. I'm not hitting E, I'm just hitting G to keep going up. G, and let's go. Now let's zoom out a bit. All the way up to the top here. Make sure your mouse is over the actual screen here. Just to about there, okay. Now we have another curve, so let's go E and G. G, E and G, E and G, E and G. Just keep going around. Yeah, maybe. And if you don't like where the point is positioned, just make sure it's selected and uh, hit G again. E and G a bunch of times. If you think too hard about it, you sometimes start messing up. E and G. E and G and let's get going down this side. Okay, let's go G a little bit further and then we'll start rounding it. E and G again. Oops, I pressed G that time without E. E and G. No. E and then G. And I'll do one more, E and then G, and we'll come to about there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mirror this side over the other side, and then we'll join those vertices together. So let's go back into object mode. You can see that. And it's, you know, it looks a little funny. You could always come in and grab a point and reposition it if that's what you think you need to do. Okay. Notice that my 3D cursor is right in the middle, I didn't move it, and the origin is at the 3D cursor, right in the middle of this object. That's important. So I can go to Add Modifier under the Wrench tab, Mirror, and I want to mirror in the X axis, and uh, I don't need clipping or anything, I'm just going to hit Apply. I can now go into this, this is one object, and I can go in and I see these two vertices are equally on the other either side of the, this axis here. I can go B, and I can either merge them in the center, or I could create a face in between them, but I think it's fine to do that, and I'll just make it a little bit more of a curve. And let's go down to the bottom. Down to the bottom here. And it looks like these ones were at the same spot, so I'll just go Alt M, make sure that it's joined. You can adjust this if you want, but that's fine. Okay, so there's my overall uh, profile. So now I'm going to go into edit mode of this. Hit A to select it all. F to make a face. E to extrude. And I'm going to pull. doesn't matter which direction you pull. If I pull this way, you'll notice a change in color. That just means that some of my polys are facing the wrong way. And so all I would do is I'd hit A a couple times and I go Control N to flip them. Okay. So there it is. And by the way, I've turned off the uh, in the, um, under display. I've turned off the grid floor. All right, so that it's not visible. All right. So there is my my guitar. 
Let's scale this in the Y. It's a, maybe a little bit thick. And when you scale stuff here, let's come up and look at this. The scale looks, a, I got 1, 1, and 0 0.859. I'm going to go Control A and choose Scale. Watch those numbers. And they jump back to 1. It's sort of like reinitialized. So all my beveling and everything will work out better. Now, I'm going to go into Edit Mode and edge selection i'm going to shift alt and click on this edge and that will select the whole edge in the top face and same thing with that and i'm going to bevel this by going Control b and pulling away from the center until i get that area and i'm going to roll my mouse wheel up one two three times and uh, let's come back out and have a look at that okay so i've rounded that edge a little bit doesn't look great yet but let's put smoothing on and that is my guitar so far. Now, if you see little streaks on it, don't worry about that. We'll be doing a lot of work on this. So that's that's what I got so far. Let's save that. Good stuff. So we've got our body of the guitar. It looks like it follows it relatively well. And I think the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the pick guard. I'm gonna do it the same kind of way. Now notice in the diagram that the pick guard is very sharp at these points okay I drew this in flash I, I curved some lines and I just didn't bother the other I will be adding small curves to these so um, we can just go ahead and go shift a bring in another plane rotate x90 all right now I'm in wireframe view I'll, I'll just for the time being I'll do this edit mode vertex and alt m merged center so I've got my point now, I think we do want to be in wireframe so we can see what we're doing. Let's go ahead and pull this down to about there, and we'll zoom in. And this is where we're going to start doing the pick card. All right, so I've got it there. I'm just going to do the same thing, and I'm going to come around. But wherever I have a corner, I'm going to round it a bit, just like I did this. Okay, E and G, and I'll do, this time I'm going to use the uh, transform tool. I'm going to pull it out to there, maybe a little further. And I'm going to go E and G, E and G a couple times, E and G, and now I'm going to come up, G and grab it and bring it all the way up. Oh boy, it's a long way up. Okay. Now, we're going to deviate from the diagram a little bit here because I've got a point and I want to curve it. So. Let's just go, uh, I'm not sure what to do, but E and G, E and G, E and G, E and G to come back. And let's maybe decide if we want to maybe pull those up a little bit more. I might need another point in there. What I could do is I can select both and go W subdivide, and that'll put a point in between. Let me just pull that out. Not perfectly round. Um, probably good enough, though, for what I'm doing. You can just manipulate them. Yeah, that's good. Okay, great. So let's take this one, G, and just pull it along. Yeah, let's try not to do that, though. G and come down here. Now, I want to show you something. I'm going to do something different here. Instead of going E and G, E and G, I'm just going to make it a sharp turn. So I'm going to go E, and then I'm going to start pulling down like this. We're going to have to make this a little bit rounded later, but let's do that with a bevel. All right. So let's come on down here. I'll do the same thing down for this one. E and I'll come out to here. Let's go back to our E and G and manually put them in the, the curve in. E and G. E and G. E and G. I probably could have come up with that one. Let's go E and G again. I'm not worried about how many points. Now, um, in behind here are the headphones, and I don't know exactly how high it goes up, but we're just going to make an estimation. And I can adjust this a little bit later anyhow. In fact, it might be a good idea to come up and bevel this one later so that I could go to there, and then I could just go E and G and come down straight like that, all right? And then I could work on that point later. It might be a tough one to bevel though. No, I think I could do it though. So let's come on back down here. Oh, I seem to be off the diagram a bit. 
Let's go back up here. Maybe I'm gonna pull this one over a bit. Like that. I'm still okay there. Cool. All right. Um, now, yeah, I'm just gonna do it. ENG. 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 I didn't do a very good job on that point, but we'll come in the, in the X direction. We'll come over to here. Okay, let's uh, just uh, chill out for a second and look at this. I'll just bring this one up a little bit. And I'll grab this one. And I'll bring it up a little bit. Okay, that's fine. Now, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these bottom points here. I'm going to press B and box select and then let go. And I have just the bottom ones. And I'm going to go scale or SZ0, scale in the X axis 0. And I'm going to take, uh, I'll just box select these points here. Alt M, merge at center. And I can even get rid of that vertex now that I've got my edge there. I can go X, dissolve vertice. And I've got that. Okay. All right, so we've done that. Let's see if we can bevel this a bit. So I'm going to select this point. Now I'm still in edit mode, all right? I beveled the body of the guitar in object mode earlier. I'm in edit mode, and so I can't just go Control B. I've got to go Shift Control B. So I've got to go Shift Control B. And now I can pull back and see what it does. And I'm going to roll my mouse up, and I'm going to position my pull my mouse up forward and that till I like the curve and that's good that's fine right there mm -hmm. let's come down to this one select the point shift control B pull back it'll start to cut it roll your mouse up a couple of times you don't put in too many points and let's try this one as well shift control B pull and it'll split it like that and put a couple like that something like that is probably just going to be just fine and there is my pick guard now deviates a little bit but it looks fine for our purposes okay so selected so go into it hit F to make face E to extrude and bring it out a little bit A and A to select it all again and control N to make sure all the polys are facing the right way let's go back into solid view and we can see it and of course this can be uh, adjusted and we will be adjusting the position of that we want it sunk into the guitar a little bit I'm not going to worry too much right now about how high to do that now it's getting a little hard to see the pick guard against the uh, guitar I'm, I am going to bevel this but before I do that let's hit N and come over to the side here and under shading not display but shading let's choose matte cap ambient occlusion and then whatever your favorite shader is um, right now my favorite shading for modeler for modeling shader for modeling is this one okay so this is what we've got so far let's remember to save once in a while let's select the pick guard go into edit mode and I like to do it in this an edge uh, selection let's shift alt and click that top edge it'll go all the way around and we're going to bevel this by hand and it's going to be beveling from the center control b pull back one two segments not too big of a round right about there and come out of that all right now we may be doing other shading and stuff like that later but i'm not worried about that right now we're just getting the general aspects of the guitar so far so good Okay, and we're not going to worry about, you can now see with the shader, the sort of stretching and stuff. I'm not going to worry about that. That's not what I wanted to do. I just want to look in the wireframe so I can see through it. Okay, awesome. Now, I think the next thing that we're going to be doing is some of these screws. All right, so um, I am in object mode, or I should be in object mode, just wireframe. So I'm going to go Shift A. And bring in a circle. I'm going to leave the default values. Rotate X 90 and scale. Let's bring this over to one of these bolts. 
Let's hit the period key to zoom way in and hit G to just move it right to there, scale it down, and I'll go around the size of that, that dot there. All right, period key to zoom in again. I can come out a wireframe and I'm going to have to move that circle out so I can see it. There we go. Okay, so let's now, there it is, go into edit mode, make sure it's selected, hit F to make a face, E to extrude, and we're going to pull upwards. Hopefully I didn't angle it. Okay, okay, we're going to pull upwards like I said. And then we're going to go Control B and pull back to bevel it, and to about maybe halfway. One, two, two is going to be fine. Okay. Deselect, come back into Object Mode, and you can of course set Origin to Geometry so that it's right in the middle of that object. Let's pull this back down to the surface, and I might scale this in the Y to flatten it a little bit. Okay. We'll deal with smoothing in a bit. All right, so that's going to be the start of my bolt. Let's select it. Let's make that little cut through it so it looks like a screwdriver could go into it. So let's select the object and go Shift S cursor to select it. That'll bring my 3D cursor in. So the next object that I'm going to bring in is going to show up right there. And I need an object there. I need a cube there because I'm going to form that little wedge part that I'm going to use to uh, cut a hole in this so it looks like a real screw. I'll show you what I mean. Shift A and bring in a cube and it's going to be huge. So just scale. There we go. Now we can start to see it. Let's hit the period key to zoom in. And let's scale this in the Z like that. And then we just got to decide what kind of screw we want this to be. It doesn't have to be that big. All right. Let's say it goes in there. Let's scale this in the X a bit wider and scale it in the Z a bit smaller. And I think I'm going to actually copy this sh Shift D and rotate Y90 so I get a cross. I'm going to select both of them and join them together. I'm going to go Control A, Rotation and Scale um, just to reinitialize them because I've been rotating and scaling these pieces. And you'll notice a change in the coloration. Again, some of my polys have flipped the wrong way. So I'm just going to go into edit mode, make sure it's all selected, control N, and it's back the way it should be. I'm going to pull it out a little bit, and I'm going to see how far down do I want it to be. So I'm going to punch a hole into the screw. So I'm going to try that. Select the screw, add modifier, Boolean, difference, and with the eyedropper, select that. Okay, see the little white lines that appeared? Hit apply. Select my cross and H to hide it, and I have carved in a pattern. Now I'm going to select the screw and I'm going to hit smoothing, and it's going to go all weird. For now, I'm going to choose this little triangle, and under auto smooth, I'm going to choose something like 60. All right, and it'll go back to looking okay. But we're going to have issues when we join these to the pick guard in the body, so I'm not going to worry about that. Alt H to bring back that cross which we used to cut with and delete it. Okay. I now have one screw. Let's go into wireframe. That one screw is selected. There it is. Let me make sure origin of geometry is on. And now I am simply going to be copying this uh, and placing it in the other position. So I'm going to go Shift D and G, and I'm going to move it down to here. Shift D, and I can just use this. I'm going to pull it over here. Shift D and G. And they don't have to be perfect. Shift D and G. All right. I believe there's supposed to be one up there. I think I'm going to put one there just for the fun of it. Shift D and G. Just wherever you want. Shift D and G. All right. Last one. Uh, Shift D. Now, let's go have a look at this and then I'll mention something to you. Let's make sure that they seem to all be sitting on the pick guard okay. I mean, you can look at the side view if you want to see if one's floating in space. They seem pretty good. Um, the one thing to note is they're all the exact same orientation with a right side up cross. So you can take them, figure out the axis that's coming out, which is the Y, all right, and just go R, Y, and just go like that. R, Y, 
just a little bit. Oh, that one didn't really move. R, Y, you know, this kind of thing. Just so they were in different orientations. Not all of them. That kind of thing. Eventually, you'll spin them around so much that they'll end up back to the position they were. I'm not even looking. I'm just going R, Y, and I'm just doing whatever. Okay. No one is going to get up that close to see them anyhow, I don't think. Okay, cool. So we got the screws. Now, I think I'll probably actually join these right now to the uh, the pick card. We'll be using some of these screws later, but I can easily get them out again. So I selected everything and go Control J, and you'll notice right away the smoothing goes weird again. So just, just for now, I'll just come back and I'll go 60 again. And that'll affect the smoothing of the pick guard as well, but I'm not worried about that right now. Just want things to look okay for the moment while we're doing this. How's our time? All right. Well, we're moving along pretty good. It's time, I think, to do a pickup. All right. Maybe we'll do pickups and then we'll leave it at that. So. This pickup is not perfectly square. I'm not just gonna bring in a cube, right? It's got rounded corners, so I'm gonna use, a, I want a rounded rectangle. My 3D cursor is all the way over here though, so let's go Shift S, cursor to center. I'll just bring it back to where it was in the middle. All right, let's go Shift A and bring in, you know, it's up to you, you bring in a plane. I like using planes. Rotate X 90, all right? And let's start scaling this in the X. Got the approximate size there and scaling in the Z and we'll move this down okay something like that anyhow let's go back into solid view for the moment and you'll say hey where the heck did it go let's just pull it up where we want it to be all right let's give it some thickness so let's go into edit mode select selected make sure it's selected e to extrude and you can go up or you can go down if i go up i get the right coloration if i go down i get wrong coloration all right so i'm going to go down to about there and select it all and go control n and it'll flip my polish the right way all right so there's the beginning of my my pickup but i've been scaling this so i'm going to go control a Rotation and scale, because I rotated it as well. Now it's ready to be worked on. Okay, back into edit mode. I, I'm going to select that edge and that edge, the vertical edges, this edge and this edge, and I'm going to bevel these so that they're a little bit rounded to make that rounded rectangle. If I can just get this thing to cooperate. All right, fine. Control B, pull back, roll your mouse up a little bit like that. Let's have a look at this. Okay, so I've got those nice round edges. You can look at wireframe if you like, and it roughly matches. Now I could I could have done that in wireframe, but that doesn't matter. I just wanted it rounded. All right. Now um, I'm going to be bringing this, and it's going to be sitting on the guitar. Now a lot of people would get rid of the back faces, and I probably should, but I don't care right now. Because I'm going to be looking at this surface, though, I, I also don't want this sharp edge. Okay, we've rounded the corners. Let's round the top. So, Shift Alt and click that whole thing. Find a good position. Control B, pull back a little bit. One, two segments is probably fine. And there you go. Okay, we can smooth that later and look better. So we get cast a little bit of light, and this looks a little bit smoother. Cool. All right, let's have a look at this now. Okay, so notice that this inner part. Of the pickup that has the little poles there um, is smaller in size and it's a bit more than a rounded rectangle so the way I'm gonna draw this or model this is I'm gonna use a circle I'm use like half of a circle and I'm gonna cut it well I'm gonna use a full circle I'm gonna cut it in half and I'm gonna take the other half and flip it and put it on that side and then I'm gonna join them together all right my 3d cursor is still right there that's totally fine so let's go shift a add a circle it's in the wrong orientation. It's like up and down like that. So let's go rotate X 90 and just start scaling and get nice and small and then bring it over here and then just keep scaling until you get the size that you think works. I'm gonna scale it a bit smaller, fit it in here, bring it up a tiny bit. That pretty much follows the curve, all right? And if I cut it there, 
Yeah, I think that would look fine. So let's go into edit mode and vertex, deselect. And I'm going to use B and then I'm going to drag up and I'm going to get rid of all of, let's say, where do I want to go? I'm going to get rid of those. I'm going to try that. X vertices. Yeah, that's going to be just fine. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to select it all and I'm going to duplicate it, Shift D or copy it, and I'm going to rotate in the Y 180 degrees. All right, because the Y is coming out at us this way. So I rotated it in the Y 180 degrees. I'm going to pull this one over there. Deselect. I'm going to take this vertex. I'm going to select it, Shift and click that one, go F. That'll make a face. Shift that one and that. F, and that'll make a face. And there I've got my shape now. I'm going to hit A to select it all, hit F, and that'll put a face right in between, and go E and pull it up. I'm going to select it all in control in case I went the wrong way. And there we go. Now, oh, can't see it. Let's push it up. Now you'll notice that my transform tool is way over on one side of it. Just go origin of geometry. Okay, cool. So I got that piece there. Let's make sure that this is sitting sort of in the pickup like that. It's very sharp looking, so I'm going to bevel this. Let's go back in. And, you know, really though, I should be going Control A, Rotation and Scale, first of all. Okay, Edge Selection, Shift Alt to click that whole edge. Control B, pull back. One, two segments is probably fine. Good enough. Do that. See, nice little rounding there. It's not smooth, but it's rounded. I mean, I could just put smoothing on it, but uh, that may, may take a little bit of work first, but that's what we're going to go for eventually. Okay. Now, uh, of course, I'm going to be copying that, but I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do that yet. Let's go back into front view and wireframe and do those poles. I think I'll just use a cylinder, and again, I'm not worrying about um, how how many polys. But since I've got my origin right in the middle of that part of the pickup, I might as well bring my 3D cursor there as well. So, with this selected and the origin right there, go Shift S, cursor to select it. My 3D cursor is now right in the middle. So when I bring in my cylinder, it's going to be in line. I'll show you what I mean. Cylinder. Rotate X90, default values, scale, and then you see it's right around the 3D cursor. So I can just get it to that point, get the approximate size. But I do have to come up here. Let's get out of wireframe. All right. And I may have to do this kind of thing. Scale this in the Y. And this has just got to stick up from there, but not too high. Something like that. Now let's go Control A rotation and scale. Ah, it flipped its its color. It poly flipped, so select it. Control and we're back to normal. While we're here, let's go ahead and select this upper edge. Control B and bevel it. Pull it down. Roll your mouse up a couple times, just like that. All right, we can um, we can squash this in the Y if we want a little bit. You pull it down. Just decide how high you want your that to be. And now, hmm, it's just a question of do we do this by eye or do I use an array? I might want to try using an array to do this. So um, I'm going to do this rotation and scale. All right. With this thing selected, I'm going to come to the wrench and I'm going to choose add modifier array. I want in the x act in the x direction. So I'm going to here and I'm just going to move the space and see if I can get close to that and I'm going to increase my count mm, six strings I don't think I'm going to be able to use an array or maybe I want to use an array because I want to center things up a little bit more and my diagrams a bit off I need to think about this right Let's do this. Let's drag these down here and see if things are lining up. Oh, well, let's get back. All right, let's increase the size here. No, we're not going to want to go that much. Let's try 1.64. 
and let's pull this up to see if it would match roughly with the diagram of what I'm doing. Well, that is centered better than my diagram. Okay, so I may go with this, and when I model, I'm not necessarily going to model every piece exactly over the diagram. I'm going to trust the mathematics of Blender and the center position. You see? So I think that is going to be okay. I can get out of wireframe and solid and just deselect that for a moment and have a look, right? That's, that's going to look fine. So let's go ahead and apply that. And let's join that to that piece. And now we can now shift D and copy this piece down to here. All right, let's have a look at that double pickup now. All right, decent amount of space in between, um, but that's that's all right. Oops, uh, why I did that? Let's go back. Okay. What we should do is we should commit to that, take this piece, this piece, and this piece, and join them together. All right, and then this can still be adjusted in terms of how high above the body we want that pickup. And we'll put it there for now, and let's go ahead and in wireframe, let's just shift D and copy that, and bring the copy down, better not copy it, shift D bring the copy to this position now because I'm going to be adding little bolts and screws I might as well not do that yet come to think of it I might as well put those bolts in and then copy it so I don't have to do it twice so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the body or the pick guard and I've already joined those so that's okay I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to select a piece of this using edge or vert vertex or face doesn't matter I'm going to go control L that will select everything that's linked to the piece I just selected. Shift D to make a copy and P and just enter to make a new object. Now, let's get out of wireframe. I now have a new bolt here, but my transform tool is way over there. The, the origin is not on my bolt, so I'm gonna set origin geometry. And I can now move this bolt and this one is still attached. And there's my free bolt. I'm going to bring this up into position, but I'm going to scale this way down and I'm going to look in wireframe at my diagram, G, and I'm going to pull it to roughly there. Let me make sure that it is not floating as it is. I'm going to pull it to here. Okay, it doesn't have to be very big, or very visible, just have it there. I'm not going to worry about the orientation of these. All right, it's, it's too small. Okay, so let's have a look here. Shift D, I'll copy one, I'll bring it out to here. I'm not, I'm not going to care if it's off the diagram. Okay, so I've got my th three of them there. Select all three of them. I can join them if I like. I can even set origin to geometry. And I'm going to shift D and I'm going to just drag them over to this side. Cool. Uh, I'm going to select those two, those ones, and Control J, and I should have everything joined together. Cool. Now we're ready to Shift D that pickup and pull it down here. There we go. And this is our work so far. Okay, coming together rather nicely, and you can see those bolts. Okay, we have some shading issues, so let's have a look at that. Okay, what I'll do is I'll just come over to this for now. I'm going to try 60, just to get rid of that. All right. Let's go with that. Um, If I want to, I can hit A, I can, uh, let's just make sure that shading is on here. Yeah, that's fine like that. I can live with that. I can 
show you some stuff that I can do later. So what I'm do what I'm doing is uh, because of the faceting here, and I've joined everything before I did anything. I'm just going to select everything, and under shading, I'm going to choose for faces smooth. I'm just going to do that, and that'll be okay. Now, as soon as I join that to the pick guard, I may have some issues. So I just want to see. Uh, I'm going to commit to that. Let's grab the both of them in the pick guard and, and join them. Yeah, it looks okay. Yeah, okay. I suppose that before I forget, I can. Well, I just don't know if I'm going to be changing the shading of this, so I'm not going to do anything yet. Okay, but with respect to the pick card, I should have, yeah, all of that. Cool. All right, let's see how we're doing here. All right, well, we've made some good, good progress, so we'll leave it there and we'll be back in a bit.